sacrifices. We are at Chichen Itza. In this vlog, we're visiting one of the greatest wonders of the world and largest ancient Mayan cities, Chichen Itza. Follow us as we journey through the history of this ancient wonder. That's the official language, language of this, uh, from this region, of course. Just got my tickets to Chichen Itza. So it cost 172 pesos to get into Chichen Itza and it took about two hours to get here. That is a cenote, it's a pit. The reason is because they read uh, stories about the sacrifices, throwing people into the cenote, wearing all this jewelry, this kind of important things. So that's why they thought also oh, these people had, of course, important things, valuables. So they thought, well, well, uh, wealth about the treasure, Mayan treasure inside the cenote. The temple behind me is called Kuku Ikan. The feathered serpent. Attack the rain god. Until nowadays, we it's make the rain god to this rain god asking for this favor in order to have a good harvest. It's March 21st, and this means after this, it's time to start farming. It's time to prepare the soil for farming. During the spring and autumn equinoxes, the sun casts a shadow, creating a serpent figure along the side of the pyramid. Instead of a head, he has the blood squirting. This is turning into little snakes. Snakes means fertility. Yeah, fertility, death, of course, even energy. The energy is very important here, and the cosmos in general. Now, time to head into the Mesoamerican ball court, where we're going to learn who got sacrificed and why. If they're looking for the rain, of course, they need to get the gods fed. Amigos, not only the Maya made sacrifices, the Celtics, for example, they made sacrifices to calm the gods down, the Romans, the, and the Greeks, Japanese, all these civilizations made sacrifices to calm their gods down. Over here, it was kind of different, but to keep them alive. Yeah, because they consider mm. if we don't get them fed, we don't offer the blood to them, they're gonna die. If they die, we're unprotected. If we're unprotected, well, disaster. So that's why they consider this part very important. So, it's time to find out who's that guy beheaded over there. Is that the winner? Is that the loser? Is that a captive? What do you think? Which one would you choose? The winner. The winner, why? Because he was the strongest. The strongest. They wanted to be sacrificed. They right? wanted to be? How do you know? <laughs> the history books. <laughs> Mexican history. <Yeah. laughs> According to more updated information, they're captives. If this was a simple match, it makes sense, right? If this was a ritual, it also makes sense if you just get the winner sacrifice because the gods deserve the best, right? But don't forget this detail. The, the winner gets protected by gods, yeah? So, if they're getting protected, does that mean they're gonna be sacrificed? No. But of course, we also can get confused because we know, we consider that the gods deserve the best, right? So we might think, oh, if the gods deserve the best, I should get the winner sacrificed. But uh, we know here that, now according to this, they're always, when we see them in this position, it means, of course, they are, on. this is submission, arms or hands tied up, of course, that in the front or the back, of course. So we know they're prisoners. Lots of them were used after the rituals over here, mainly, these prisoners. It doesn't mean they're not important people. They're rulers from other ceremonial centers or even these settlements, my friends. But mainly <coughs> prisoners. Yes. After they beheaded, would they just leave the body to decay or would they put it in a fire or what? No. We're gonna see another platform where they used to carry or to put the heads, of course. And the body, they usually 
through these bodies into these water holes. The water, the water, the water holes. Yep. Do they believe kind of like the water will lead them to God? Well, that is an important question because the cenote, we have around 8,000 cenotes over here. The, uh, the, 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 the water holes over here. Yeah, it's all natural, all natural, of course. What happens here is that the cenote is the entrance to the underworld. What's this wow. place? It's a place to reborn. So, that is, there is a match over there, of course. Yeah, you get thrown over there, you start this trip. Journey to get to the underworld, to reborn, right? This area right here is for a ritual ball game. So they would score points if they hit the ball through that hoop. And the walls are tilted, so the acoustics are really loud. This is from 900 AD. Please get closer. Please. Please, please, please. Let's use this word now. Tequila. Okay, <laughs> okay. Perfecto. Please, don't say tequila. <laughs> this tequila, all right? Please, face it up, all right? Then you try to hear your voice on the other side, please. Oh, wow. Ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, and three. Tequila! tequila! Help. We need more tequila. Yeah, we need more. <laughs> no, the don't do, uh, uh, has to be short. No, like tequila. No, tequila. Is it okay? okay? One, two, three. Tequila! tequila! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 One more time, please. Yeah, louder, please. One, two, three. Tequila! Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. it was better the second time. Second time. Yeah. Yeah. Here you can see the tilt of the wall, it's tilted just a little bit for acoustics. There were protection everywhere and they also hold that thing that is rock. Right, a piece of uh, this is carved, of course. This is to strike the ball here because it's something heavy, of course. That's why they use uh, they wear protection everywhere to get uh, you know, not to get injured. Look, there's eagle over there. This is the perfect uh, evidence about the Mexican, the, the, the Mexican plateau uh, influence, my friends. Eagle doesn't exist here. It's mm. once in the mountain here. Mexican plateau, it's far away. Yeah, we have pots around here. Um, here, another warrior, another eagle, another warrior with uh, arrows and, and head. And uh, here, Mexican plateau is represented by eagle, Maya, jaguar. Yeah, jaguar is an important animal here. This power, by the way, this is the reason this group, these important people, practice the cranial deformation. You've heard about this? Using the board at the top, at, around the head to get it flattened, 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 of course. Yeah, because they're trying to resemble the jaguar's head, mm. right? Because this is a, a great skilled animal, so that's why they want it to resemble this. I'm at Chichen Itza. Check this out. This is the pyramid, the Mayan pyramid. So. Part of this was restored. You can see this side is much smoother and this side there's the bare rock. And our guide said that it was not only used for sacrifice, but it was also an important political monument as well. The sound hits the inner part and then comes back. And there's nine tiers here, nine tiers. It makes the sound of a bird called a quetzal in Guatemala. It's a famous bird. So there's nine floors here. Nine symbolizes nature's belly. It's the cycle of life. And then 13 is another number that you hear a lot in Mayan culture. That right there is a jaguar. Mike, where are we going right now? Cenote. Cenote. This is a special cenote used for sacrifice. <laughs> The cenote. This is the sacred cenote. Sacrifices, they went in here. This is like the belly of the underworld. 
Historical Mayan sources define this natural well as an important ceremonial center and pilgrimage destination between the 5th and 16th century AD. Rituals were conducted here and offerings were made of gold, copper, tombak, a kind of brass, obsidian, quartz, shell, wood, copal, rubber, textiles, and skeletal remains, mainly of children and adult males. Dun, dun, dun. So some cenotes you can go swimming in. This one is purely special and sacred. Civilization collapsed, but the Mayans, they're still here. In fact, our guide is Mayan, and they live in Mexico, Guatemala, Belize. Part of Honduras, part of El Salvador. Oh, December 21st, the winter solstice, the sun will set right in the center at the top of this period. This is the temple of the rain god Chak. The serpent. Wow, look at all the tour guides here. It's around noon right now. So we're in Chichen Itza and there's all these other temples that I didn't even know about, including this one over here and the circular one. Look at the face right there. Little did you know, this was here too. We hope that you enjoyed this tour of Chichen Itza. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more travel videos.